do cast it onto my ocean water. I would also like to adjust the color that my water reflects to kind of like a skyish blue. I set my mix strength to about 60% and I set my brightness to right around 50. And since this is kind of like the fine tuning, increase the strength of your bump map from 20% to 40%. I'm also going to adjust my specularity. Um, I'm going to set the width to 50% and the height to about 32%. Finally, go into your displacement channel and bump up your height to 8. Now, I know I've been jumping around back and forth a lot, but uh, you know I'm still figuring this stuff out too. But if you got to this point, this is what your water texture should look like. So um, I'm glad you guys are here at this point. I think we're ready to move on and start creating some rocks and some stuff for the ocean to play with and that's really going to add a sense of depth to this scene. To create that ocean ridge wall that we use to collide the water against, we're going to create a spline and this spline is going to be a cubic spline. We're just going to create a couple random points around the edge of our water shader and uh, try not to keep it perfectly straight. Add some, uh, add some creativeness, add some fun. If you want to add some ridges, do that as well. We're going to wrap it all the way around and then we're going to close the spline. And this is going to give us that little rectangle down there at the bottom. And I'm just going to move it slightly. Um, this is going to be the base of our um, rock wall. Now, let's go ahead and extrude this. Drop the, the spline underneath the extrude nerves, and inside the extrude nerves, turn the Z to zero, but increase the Y value. This, we're going to move up to, oh boy, quite a few, 244 feet. We're going to increase the subdivisions because we need polygons. But for this ridge to work, we need an even distribution of polygons. So, click on your spline change your intermediate points to uniform and reduce the number down to two. This will give us a nice and evenly distributed uh, cube for our rock wall. So from here let's lower this a little bit so the bottom of the ocean wall doesn't cut through the rock face. Now, on our extrude, we are going to get rid of our caps. So set your end cap to none and your start cap to none. Turn this into an editable object and then close polygon hole on the top. This is going to give us the top of our ridge. Then we're going to go to structure and we're going to go to set point value. Now, in the all area, I want you to set this to crumple axial and change the values to 5 on the X, Y we're going to adjust it 20 and Z it's going to be 5. Now this is what this is going to do is this is going to randomly uh, adjust all the point values for X uh, by 5, Y by 20 and Z by 5. That way we're not doing this by hand which is a gigantic pain in my ass. When you're done just click the button apply. And as you can see Check it out, it's automatically distorted everything. Now this looks a little too perfect, so I'm going to select the middle points on the rock face and I'm going to crumple the axis on the X and Z without the Y by turning the Y crumple to zero and then just clicking add apply and it will crumple the X and Z axis even more by five each time you press on the apply button. So since we got a rock face, now we need to add the little rocks, the little uh, juttings of rock that are going to happen and occur naturally along the edge of the rock face. So go ahead and add a sphere. And with this sphere, we're going to reduce the segments down to about 9. We don't need that many polygons because our displacement map is going to really uh, distort this thing completely. Go ahead and press C and that will turn it into an editable object. Then adjust the height and width so it's more taller. It's like an oblong, like an egg. Then go to, uh, I believe it's uh, structure, and we're going to go to set point value. 
and we're gonna set the Y value to 5 and hit apply and we're just gonna click it a couple times until we get this random distortion which will make it look more natural instead of a perfectly uh, circular rock then go to your spline and get the cubic uh, spline out and let's just draw a path now it doesn't have to be perfectly straight I want it to be angular I want it to be uh, has some variation because this is the path we're gonna put our rocks on and uh, we we want it to have a little variety a little fun so create this path using the cubic spline then go to MoGraph cloner object and drop your sphere underneath the cloner object and then inside the cloner we're gonna take that spline that we created that crazy looking spline and drop it underneath object inside our cloner object and this is going to put all the spheres along the path of the spline that we created using the cubic spline now go ahead and set your mode to even and this is going to give us a nice dispersion of spheres all along this path now if you click on the original sphere you can shrink down the size of these spheres these these jutting rocks but it's not going to give you that variation that we're looking for it's not going to give you that sense of realism because nothing is random so guess what uh, the good folks at cinema decided to put this great little effector for our cloner object in MoGraph called random effector so in order to do this go to MoGraph uh, make sure you have your cloner object selected and drop go to the MoGraph drop down and click on random effector now you'll see that everything gets distorted if you click on the parameters and deformer inside the parameter there's going to be a position a scale and a rotation so uh, just really quickly uh, if you click on position and turn on that checkbox uh, you can affect all your items underneath that X, Y, and Z from your spline position-wise. 50 on the X, 50 on the uh, 0 on the Y, 50 on the Z. If you want to change the number, you can. Same thing with scale. Um, you can adjust the scale on the X, Y, and Z individually, or you can also affect the rotation randomly. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we don't want the y-axis to vary. So, we're going to set the position on the y to 0. For the scale, we're going to adjust it so that the, the z and the x and the y all have a slightly different variation. And rotation, we are going to rotate this these uh, um, uh, rocks quite a bit, but also we're going to add a little angular pitch and yaw to the rocks itself now these things are floating a little bit out of the water so I'm gonna click on the spline that the uh, cloner object is attached to just move it down and kinda nestle it into the water a little bit uh, now for me personally it was a little too fat the rocks I wanted them a little more slender a little thinner and I wanted to change the amount out there so I just uh, adjusted the random effector a little bit but nothing new that I'm showing you right now now I tried texturing these rocks on my own using what cinema gave and it was really hard and honestly you can't really match what nature provides you so I went and grabbed an image it's a still image of a rock face but the problem with the textures is you want them to loop you want them to match edge for edge and so with a little research I found this is the best technique to create kind of a seamless loop for your textures so you can apply it to all your 3d models and and you won't see that edge when it finally wraps around to the other side so to do this, start in Photoshop. Go ahead and paste in your rock texture. This is mine. And then go to Filter, Other, and Offset. And we're going to offset this image to the right and to the left. Or I'm sorry, to the right and down. So we can see the edges of this image. And we're going to use the Cloner tool to uh, hide these edges. So go to your Cloner tool. And for your brush, don't choose a circular or hard. Use something random like a paintbrush or something like that. Something that is uh, going to be just as random as your image. Then go ahead and start 